Hello, friends. Welcome to the F Society IRC podcast, a Mr. Robot review show. I'm your host, Heroja Shai. Hello. Uh, this is Heroja Shai, all bundled up here for my review of 404 Not Found. Uh, this is F Society IRC podcast. I'm your moderator of this chat, and let's get into this episode. Uh, whew. One thing I've noticed, um, and this is just a film and television thing, I have been on the worst coast, and when it's like cold and stuff, I am amazed that, and I've seen it a few times, but I'm amazed that the films and the movie industry in general or television doesn't allow for the actors as their characters to be like flushed with all the blood rushed into their face when it's cold or when they have no gloves on having all the blood rushed to their fingertips or have some like have like the Rudolph nose or the Rudolph ears or something because man I just oh I was like all itchy throughout the whole Tyra Wellick and um Elliot scenes there when they were in that town I just oh it was just whoa I was like oh why did you go outside with no gloves why don't you have a a, a warmer hoodie Elliot I mean come on now so I was very anxious during that whole scene because it just gave me miserable blizzard flashbacks uh, from childhood um but this episode whoo this episode was another meditative episode. It's like each of these episodes are so dense with emotions and uh, moving the plot forward in some fashion, in some sense. And it's just, whew, big dummy Tyro Wellick. Oh. And then we have Darlene's side story, side adventure keeper with uh, Drunk Santa, which is very interesting. And then you have Dom. Dom and her, Dom and her loneliness. Um, so those are the three main stories. We did not see White Rose, or Price, or Veer, but um, we basically centered on our, our four main team kind of good guys this episode. Uh, so we'll, we'll let's get into it. Uh, let's start out with Dom, okay? Um, we check in with Dom, and she's back in her apartment. She's not in her mom's house anymore. And she's watching uh, on her laptop in her bedroom, and she's watching the interrogation video of uh, Darlene, and she's basically masturbating to it. And it wasn't weird for the masturbation part. I mean, female masturbation has been portrayed uh, in film and television, not very often, but it has. Uh, there was a recently I was watching Limetown, and they did it, uh, where the main uh, protagonist on that show is masturbating. But it just felt a little weird in the sense that we know that kind of like the even though Dom is on the dark side with the dark army, we know that she has these ethics and for her to be masturbating even though she's into Dar uh, Darlene uh, to the interrogation scene like taking that home first off on her laptop uh, might be even be a personal laptop <laughs> and masturbating to it was just a little weird and Maybe that's why she wasn't satisfied from it, I guess, because um, of the ethics of it all. Um, and so she goes back into like her little sex chat that we've seen her do before, trying to, I guess, fall asleep or feel something, and um, she falls asleep, and then she rechats with the person, and it turns out to be this whole dream sequence thing. And it's a dream sequence, it's a callback from what she told... I forgot who she told it to. I think she showed it to Darlene. Where she said that she had this nightmare, this dream, in which she meets a beautiful woman and things go bad and she's um, drowning. She finds herself drowning. And in this chat, and there's a callback to like a, the, the handle of the person she's chatting with is a callback to um, Christian Slater's role in a, a movie, a famous movie he did like back in the 90s called Pump Up the Volume. Um, you know, she's chatting with this person and the person's like, we should meet in real life. She goes, I don't do do. She goes, oh, good, because I'm a girl. And so they meet up. And this is where I want to pause because it seems like nobody on this show practices online safety 
It's like, I know people do this, but it's like, why don't you meet in a public place first? Check out the person before you take them back to your place? Like, something, but nah. Dom doesn't do any of this. So it's this very beautiful woman does come to her apartment. Um, they're having a conversation. I was a little surprised when they cut it to it. Like, yes, actually, it was a woman. It wasn't a man. You know, there wasn't some violence or anything. Well, there was violence, but right off the bat. And they're conversating. They're chatting. They're trying to get engaged with each other. And, you know, Dom's like, you know, stop this. She wants to go to the, the restroom first. And she goes to the restroom. And, you know, their, their conversation was like, you know, really small talk and just little awkward because Dom's a little bit of an awkward person very lonely person and um, obviously the, they're like kind of into each other playing off to each other like you know is this the first time you invited anybody over from online and Dom wouldn't really answer that question which means she's probably has done this before this kind of risky behavior for a woman but uh, an FBI agent really um, and someone of Dom's in intellect um, so she goes to her to her bathroom and there's candles lit and there's rose roses everywhere and Dom's a little perplexed because she didn't do that and she turns to the person to the woman and the woman has that that dark army mask that we've seen before the big like red face China uh, Chinese dragon face and attacks Dom Dom's fighting back because she gets pushed into the bathtub which is full now you know it's been full of water. And she's drowning, like her this dream that she's spoken about. And, she, and the woman's saying, "Stop resisting! As soon as you stop resisting and let go, this is going to be—it'll be all over." And Dom stops. She she stops resisting and accepts, I guess, her fate or whatever. And then she wakes up, and it was all a dream. It wasn't something that actually really happened to her and she's still in her bed it's still the chat profile the real chat profile person says, oh you fall asleep blah 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 so, you know maybe next time or whatever and you know dom closes her laptop and that's the end of dom's storyline and i guess three things you can take away from it is just how lonely and isolated dom is how maybe kind of desperate she is to make those connections which kind of explains why she had that uh, relationship with darlene um her informant if you will um, why she's in the place that she is with the dark army and I think the fact that she's this dream if you will I think she her acceptance that she is her fate that she is a dark army operative and she needs to stop resisting stop uh, I guess not giving a hundred percent to Janice but be full on board or um, it's gonna be worse for her so it'll be interesting to see when we have the next episode um, with the aftermath of Elliot and Tyrell's actions, how Dom operates. So we're going to see a new Dom that has fully embraced her dark ar army operative status. Um, or she's going to continue to resist. We'll, we'll see. I, I think she's going to go dark army and it'll be interesting to see what that does to that character and what it does for her relationships. Um, with our uh, team Elliot, what, what will happen there. Um, again, I don't think anyone's gonna get out of this alive. I think they've hinted a little bit. Um, there's a theory about how Darlene and Dom are supposed to be on an airplane and, and die on an airplane together. Um, we'll see if that actually is something that's gonna happen, if that's an actual foreshadowing or not. Um, but like I said, um, no one's getting out of this alive and I think in some sense, um, Dom is, you know, again, I, if all the people who get out alive, I want Dom and Krista to do so. But again, like I stated last episode in 403, I think it's just going to be Flipper with the landlord. It's going to be the only living thing that um, is going to survive Elliot. So there's that. It was a brief, brief interaction with Dom. Just a little hit and run, if you will, as far as story time goes. And then we catch up with Darlene. And this is the kind of basically the aftermath, her part of the aftermath of Elliot and Tyrell. Elliot was supposed to meet with her after sending that information about Allsafe. Uh, at Allsafe, the information about the Cypress National Bank. Of course, Elliot didn't show up. She's real pissed. She's giving like this really ugly, vicious voicemail to him. How she, 
she fucking can't believe he's there. He's like, you, we need to finish this goddamn hack. You're on my ass, basically on my ass about this, and then you won't fucking show up. You don't call. You're not answering your goddamn phone. And she's like, we can't even do the things that we need to do. I'm right out of the place we need to go, which is called virtual reality. I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, because the chick that they just social engineer, who's possibly a dark army operative, doesn't have direct access. She can only look at the accounts. She can't transfer the accounts, so it's a it's just useless to them. All, all uh, Darlene was able to do was like read and see stuff. So there's some data and information they can build off of, but the place they need to go to be able to transfer funds is virtual reality. And she's right outside those fucking offices. She goes, we can go here now. It's fucking, you know, Christmas Eve to Christmas Day. They have lack security because of that. You can take advantage of it. Fucking call me. I don't you treat me like shit. I'm tired of it. You're a fucking asshole. It's like really digging into LA. She goes, I wish you were, if I go to your apartment and you're fucking hanging from the ceiling, I'm going to be so pissed, but I'm going to be so glad at the same time. I wish you were dead. And she's just like screaming this to in this, this rant like of all her frustrations towards Elliot because he has been a fucking asshole to her. He did show up. He's not picking up his phone. He did text her and she's fucking worried as usual. She doesn't know where he is. He's been acting strangely to her more so than normal. And so she's worried about him. And she doesn't send the voicemail. She's like, the voicemail she does send is like fucking pick up the phone. Uh, so, she's outside this virtual reality place, she needs to get to Elliot's, right, uh, transportation is probably very slow, holiday hours, so she can't take the subway or, or, uh, taxi or whatever, Uber or something like that, so, she's gonna steal a car. Uh, but first she needs to make sure Elliot's at his apartment, so she turns on her signal app tracker and realizes he's not even at his fucking apartment, so she's even more fucking pissed about it so this is where she's still in this car and she's still in this car and she gets caught by this drunk ass Santa he goes hey hey that's my car it's my car what are you doing and, and Darlene's trying to talk you know hey you know it's nothing I'm gonna just get out of here she's trying to get it. the guy chases her down he's a little bit bigger than her she's trying to talk her way out of it like you don't want to call, call the cops to get the paperwork it's okay I'm just gonna go he goes oh you want some kind of stealing you know they're trying to go back and forth and go like, what is it going to take, basically, during the two where you're not going to call the cops and I can just bust out? Because she's probably very concerned of him getting louder, trying to get more people, bring more attention. She's going to get caught. And he goes, yeah, I think some things like, uh, I can't find my keys, so could you start my car? And Tony's like, yeah, I can do that for you yeah you just you know drive me home and something and darling's like okay if i do that for you can i just borrow your car after we drop you off and make a run and uh, bring it back so darling's trying to finagle her way to for this and the guy's like okay and so drunk santa's in the car and she's she's like where do you live and they're having a bit of a drunk conversation back and forth and he's like yeah, he's like a Santa for the kids, uh, him and the, the, the other like holiday players, if you will. You know, they get drunk and that's a, the tradition and he does it for these cancer kids. And Darlene's like, wow, you're a fucking better person than me for doing that. He goes, yeah, you know, it used to be much more fun with my wife. And Darlene's looking at him like, it's okay. And he goes, yeah, you know, I'm not work. And, you know, I got these pills here. And he's just like, it sounds like he's despondent. But really, he's just drunk. And Darlene's like looking at him like there's something wrong, you know, is, you know, um, that he's suicidal. This is the conclusion from the conversation he had, they have that he's suicidal, that his wife is dead, and he's gonna kill himself tonight. And Darlene, you know, is driving him home, a little concerned, trying to keep him engaged, trying to keep him, you know, going. She tells a little bit about herself, but not truly too much. And um, they they get to the guy's house, and his car is parked into the fucking driveway. Same model, same exact, you know, style of car, but not his car. And he's like, oh. And I felt real bad for Darlene right there that moment because I didn't drive into the city. I got a ride. Yeah. That's why I don't have my keys. 
he goes, like, yeah, thanks. And then he goes, like, whose car is this? And Darlene's like, no, why don't you just kind of go home? <laughs> Darlene's a little pissed because she could have just fucking took the car, you know? She's trying to find Elliot. He goes, yeah, you know, have a Merry Christmas, you know, have a good one. And he goes walking into the car, he walks into the house, and then Darlene does something that she normally doesn't do. She She's empathetic to this person, and she, she trying to reach out, trying to help him, maybe feeling the holiday spirit. And she goes, hey, don't kill yourself. You know, you can find something worth work together. And he goes, what are you talking about? You know, I know your wife's dead, and you got these pills, but he goes, my wife, my wife isn't dead. He goes, we you said she would she didn't go to that yeah because she broke her back and these pills are for her i got i picked up this prescription i'm not gonna kill us he's like looking at her weird he goes wow you what's wrong with you man you know are you okay and darling is like you were it sounded like you said no he's like no and she's broken back you know fine work you know these pills are for her man i just Wow, and he goes, and he starts walking into the, into the house, he goes into the house, and Darlene's just there, and she's just, she's just, she thought she was doing the right thing, she thought all these, because the way her life has been going, all these negative thoughts about the conversation, these pieces, just from her perspective, From her perspective, which is our perspective, you would think that this guy, you know, holidays, he's going to kill himself, he has these pills, he lost his, you think he's lost his wife, but she didn't do enough real follow-up questions like, you know, what happened to her wife? How did she die? Is there, what went wrong? You know, what's, you know, what's your wife's name? You know, things, things of that nature that you would, a person who has a bit much more stronger social connections with people would have done and kind of unearth and unpack to see like what the status of this guy really instead of just jumping to the dark dark collusions and so Darlene is still outside this guy's house he comes back kind of scares the shit out of her scared the shit out of me he goes what are you still doing here you you okay you know do you, do you want to come in you know she goes oh, I'm fine and then he goes okay well I'm gonna go back in goes back, <laughs> saunters back in, drunk and style, and then Darlene gets out of the car and she goes, she just unloads on him, unloads on a stranger. She goes, I've lost fucking everybody. I lost my parents, I lost my best friend, um, I lost my boyfriend, who is potentially the love of her life. Um, I have lost everything. I have, only thing I have is my brother and he's a fucking asshole and I'm so worried about him. I don't know where he is and I kind of wished he was dead but I don't want to wish him dead and she's like at a breaking point and the guy is listening to everything she has to say he goes okay and then walks turns around and walks away and Darlene is just like standing there I guess she expected to be comforted or something like get the same kind of response she kind of gave to him um and then he kind of goes back to the car and he goes, you know, you need to take care of you. Okay? Fuck all this other stuff. You need to take care of you. Because if you can't take care of you, then what good are you to everybody else? And that kind of shook Darlene even more so. And, uh... He goes back in for like the third time, back to it towards his house, and his wife comes out like, what the fuck's going on, you drunken bastard, <laughs> you know? And they hug, he goes, yay, I got it, you know? And so Darlene drives away, and she's driving, and she's probably going towards LA's direction, but she just, she just pulls over, and she just can't do it. She's just, she does what she probably should have done, <laughs> and maybe kind of sort of has been doing, but just really more so of just letting it all out just fucking crying and letting it out because you know she has lost a lot you know Cisco died right in front of her uh, Trent and Moby are dead she's probably really close to Trent Angela I don't know if it's Trent or Angela who's your best friend 
but you know Angela her death obviously has affected her um, the loss of her both of her parents you know even though her mother might have been trashed to her she's still her mother her father's been dead for a very long time and she's at a breaking point she just can't do this anymore really and she just just sits there in the car off the side of the highway and just start bawling and, and crying a bit and just letting it out which I think she really needed to do and so that's where we leave off with Darlene and we get to our dynamic duo of Tara Willock and Elliot pretty dumb face Tara Willock hey man I got the CEO don't like I said that last time so we pick up immediately right off where he, we left them off, um, in the apartment. And you can see the perspective of the dark army guy, because it is dark army. We go in the, in the perspective of the van, and you have all those like chips and trash, and there's a gun and the equipment, and he's listening to the conversation. And the Elliot and Tyrell start having like a, like a fake conversation, because they, they got to get to the van and stop the dark army guy. And they're having this conversation about, you know, about this and that, and, and the Dark Army guy's listening. And then Tyra Wellick, like, knocks on the van door, the guy goes over to it, and opens the door, and here's Tyra Wellick with a hammer, just, boom, bashes the dude's face in, like, really hardcore, where, you know, the dead, the dead is dead. So Elliot has run down from the apartment. He's like, what the fuck have you done? He's like, I'm taking care of it. Get in the van. So uh, they get in the van and they're going to travel to like this remote location up north. Get out of the city. And they pull over to get some more gas. In the middle of fuck nowhere. It's like there's tension in there. Like, you know, you just killed a dude. They got a body in the van. They got to get rid of this equipment. Tyrell Wellick is like taking in charge. Like he tells Elliot, he's pumping the gas. Which um, on the East Coast, I guess you can pump and then pay. West Coast, you gotta pay first. Um, maybe it's because more highway systems. I don't know. It's just it's two different systems here in the states. Um, <laughs> confuses the hell out of people. Um, but anyways, like once you get past the Rockies, you gotta pay before you pump. Um, <laughs> uh, so Tyrell is like. You know, go in there, get a ga get a lighter. I'm gonna fill this gas can up. Um, we're gonna basically burn this van. That's the plan: burn the van, burn the evidence. And um, so Elliot goes in there. It turns out um, there's no internet. Internet's down, which is weird. And so you can't use eCoin. Um, if it was Bitcoin, you could but there's no internet so you can't use the equine and there's no phones because the internet will get back to that so the woman's talking to Ellie and Ellie is like Tyrell comes in and he's like eating a jerky thing he's like wondering what the issue is he's like there's you can't use equine you have to use cash so Tyrell well it looks at Elliot pulls out his money the woman at the counter is talking to Tyrell it's like I know you from somewhere and he's like no no you don't know him. he doesn't want to be identified it's important he's not identified no you don't know me anywhere and she goes no, I've seen you before. You're on Big Brother. And so Tyra Wella goes, yeah, yeah, I was on Big Brother. They weren't in the conversation. Pays for the gas. Goes outside. And the van's gone. Now, there's two options. Either Dark Army followed them and took the van and they're even bigger screwed over. Or the Dark Army guy wasn't really dead. He took the van and they're still screwed over because as soon as the Dark Army... Here's their conversation that they're they're still working together. They're they're dead men, so they go back into the convenience store. It's like you know we need to use a phone. There's no cell service out here. She goes oh because the internet internet phone. And side note, this is one of the reasons why I personally don't get an internet phone um, for that and have landlines and tell people to get a landline because if they have an emergency, you don't want something dependent solely on electricity. You want something that's gonna still work when shit hits the ground and the phone lines are one of those things they might be busy but you still can dial in and try to get through kind of get through the network there but so they're kind of screwed and the lady's trying to have a small talk and she realizes it's Tyra Wellick and he goes no I'm not Tyra Wellick and he goes no I think you really are and they're like you know and Elliot's really frustrated he's like 
he's trying to ask, you know, how far, you know, far are they from town? They can just walk it. You know, she's like, asking if she had a car, you know. She goes, oh no, my husband's gonna pick me up. And they're like, you know, I can you guys in there? like, no, 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 no. Um, and she goes, well, you know, there's a shortcut. And she's just taking a really long time. And Ellie's like, where's the fucking shortcut, lady? <laughs> What's the fucking shortcut? And she's like, wow, you're so rude. And I think it's Mr. Robot that does it, the, the Mr. Robot personality. And she goes, yeah, if you just go across the street, you go straight across the way, past the river, you're going to see the street, you can take it into town, and you can get there, you know, in half an hour. And they're like, okay, so that's what they're going to do. They're going to walk in the middle of the night through the woods with no flashlights, no gloves, just the clothes they got on. Tara Wellick is in his suit and everything, and Elliot's in his little hoodie, out in the frickin' snow, in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere to try to get to town so they can try to get the hell out of there, find the dark army person, and stop them. So, they're walking in the woods, and they are lost. Okay, they're walking, they start having conversations, they start venting their f frustrations. Tara Wellick is kind of they get into Elliot like basically he's in the same position and Elliot's like it's got to be around the bend he goes you don't know that you know they, you know we're just walking towards death you know death is despair is entire world. his whole entire demeanor is just as soon as that dark army van jetted he's just uh, and Elliot's blaming him because he that dark army guy wasn't really dead um <clears throat> They're in this woods and they're hearing this like, weird scream noise <laughs> and I'm thinking oh shit werewolves and they're like what the hell is that this just keep walking and it's like there was like you don't really care about well, well you get the care about part but it's like you know dark army's gonna get us like, death destruction you know you don't really care about me you know you think you're better than me you never really cared about me what are we doing this for why are you even here why don't you just kind of get up and go Tyrone talks about you know you know this is a 6,000 star suit I thought this used to be enough for me you know let people know you know I'm wearing these nice clothes and they're, you, you don't care look at you you're in the hoodie like I don't see you any, in anything else you know I actually dress up for the world you know for myself, if you're just in this hoodie, you don't, you don't care about anything. You don't care about me. You don't care about this. It's pointless. That crime is going to kill us. Don't you even understand? We're walking into death. Don't you understand that? And, and Elliot's like, we just got to keep going, Tyro. Let's just keep going, kind of avoiding all this. And Tyro Wellick is just, he's, he's kind of resigned to his fate, if you will. And the, the dark army is going to get him. And... They, they hear some cars as they're arguing and they think they've got to the shortcut but no they were walking in circles and they're back to where they started and they're even more fucking screwed so Alice, they're like no oh, fuck so they don't even go back to the gas station they just keep walking down the road and just ho hoping they can get to town somehow and Tyra Wellick just kind of sits on the side of the road and and Elliot's like, why are you even stopping? What are you doing? He goes, I got a rock in my shoe. And he takes his shoe off and goes around. He goes, did you ever care about me? Do you even care about anything? You know, did you ever think about just going up and leaving and going? And Elliot's like fucking frustrated with all this. He's like, he's like basically, fuck you, Tyra Wellick. I'm going to keep on walking. I'm going into town. And, and Tyra Wellick is just talking to himself about his kid and his life and what he thought he wanted and what he what has happened to him and how he, he thought they were gods and the things they were gonna do and none of that's gonna happen and then you know they're just walking to death dark arm is gonna get get us everything is over it's just death all around and meanwhile while they're having this conversation there's the sound that's this heinous animalistic sound that's just been going off and Elliot comes back to Tyrell and goes why are you back here he goes 
because you're probably the only person who actually fucking likes me you know um tyro was like you know what is, it, what is it for and he goes ellie goes i know i'm gonna probably be dead but my sister <laughs> i can at least warn her get into town call her on the phone and tell her to get out of here that's why he's walking that's why he's gonna keep on going he's doing it for darlene and Tyra looks at him and it's like, okay. And he realizes maybe Elliot does actually care about something for somebody. So he gets up, steeds himself, you know. He may not have Joanna, but he still has a son. Maybe something good can come out of this. Maybe saving Darlene might be his good grace, if you will. So they keep walking and then there's, they come across a deer. And it's a deer that's been hit. And it's like, you realize, oh, that's what the animal sound is. It's like the deer dying and it's screaming and it's finally dead. That's why the sound has stopped. And they come across that and they go around. It's kind of like this bend and there's this lights and it's the van. It's like, oh, the dark army guy hit the deer and he's over here. So, hurrah, we can salvage this. So they kind of sneak up in the van. Tyra Wallet goes on the driver's side. Elliot goes onto the uh, passenger side and they're going to try to see and oh so the dark army guy's in there and he's he can't call anybody so he's in there he's just all messed up and he's not moving or whatever and he starts he has a gun he sees Elliot Elliot poof pops up boom 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 the more shots fired and then he kills himself because that's what the Dark Army does. Um, Ellie gets into the van a little bit, goes around, sees a Tyra Wellick, guy's dead. You know, Dark Army goes to Tyra Wellick. Tyra Wellick is shot. He got shot by the dude in the stomach. And Ellie's like, come on, we'll go to the hospital. Tyra Wellick's no, I don't, I'm not going to go to the hospital. He was like, you got to cut a coat. And Tyra Wellick's no, you need to burn the van. You need to get out of here. You need to cover this up. And he goes, no, we can get to the van. It doesn't look like, you know. He goes, I'm just, and Elliot's like, that's it? You're just going to give up? He goes, no, I'm just going to go for a walk. And he starts walking away and leaves Elliot. And he keeps walking and keeps walking. And he's walking down the road. And he's kind of slow, meandering. I mean, he could have got to the hospital. It was a gut shot. He had time. Um, he wasn't that done, though. He got a, like a, a doctor that could have uh, fixed him up or whatever. But he keeps going and he's in the woods. He hears a noise and he sees he sees his light, this like blue white light, and he bends down and he goes towards it. And that's the end of the episode. And I don't know what any of this means. I don't know what any of this means. <coughs> I don't know if Tyra Wells is dead. I'm assuming he is, which will really fuck up everybody's plans. Elliot's plans, the Deus Group's plans, Price, White Rose. I mean, the whole point of messing up with the timeline was uh, to expose Price and Elliot and appoint Tyra Wellick as CEO. So if they don't have Tyra Wellick as CEO, what is the Deus Group going to do? What is White Rose going to do? Does this mean the Price and Elliot are working together? Is this something different? Um, is Tyra Wellick dead? Did he? I thought when he went to the blue and white thing, he went to literally like a save point from a game. And that's when the whole like machine time multi thing is gonna come to play. Um, some people I was looking on the boards online said that uh, a way for hunters to be able to uh, lure deer is they put these lights out near these traps um, that cause the deer to come to these traps. I don't know how that's legal, but apparently it is. And that's maybe what Tyra Wellick found because you know there was a deer out on the road. Um, Obviously, there might be hunters in the area. I mean, that's where Tyler Willock is at. I don't know. I do know from previews that we do know the, the van has been torched, but we don't know the status of Tyler Willock. 
and if you don't show me your body, I'm assuming you're still alive. So until we get that answer, um, another Denzel character. We have a Dark Army operative that killed himself because he failed in his mission. We have Elliot burning the, the Dark Army van, um, potentially. Uh, Tyra Wellick could be dead. We're getting like two deaths in episodes, so I'm thinking Tyra Wellick is dead. Um, but again, like until I see next episode, for sure. Um, Elliot still needs to get a hold of Darlene. Darlene still needs to get a hold of Elliot. Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. So they... This is a day of the meeting. They got to do this hack. Everything is just so sloppy and chaotic. And we still have Veer and Krista and some more episodes to go off of. Um, it's not not looking good for Team Elliot. Um, I do appreciate this kind of existential conversation that Elliot and Tyrell are having. Kind of explain some of the dynamics that they were having with each other about this partnership, how much faith people put in Elliot and Elliot not realizing how much faith people have in him and just having such like a really disregard for it like he's this um, a bad god if you will you know he's not generous to his followers if you think about it from Ramon to Cisco Trenton Moby even to Darlene to some extent Angela you know he's just even Shayla uh, he's just bad. Just a bad dude all around. And I've said this before, I, you know, there are no real heroes on the show and Elliot's very much of, much of a villain. As much of a villain as White Rose is, even if his motivations um, are better than White Rose in the sense that he wants to save the world and better people, but he's still a villain by the, the way he's gone about things. Um, it's sad to see Tyra Wallet go after not seeing all season two. I mean, kind of hidden in season three. Briefly, first episode of this season uh, mentioned, and then at the end, big dummy telling everything um, at the season th at the end of episode three, and then there's this it. So it seems like we're getting a lot of like character, major character deaths, if you will, coming up, and I think this is like the real first big one. I think Price is next. I think probably Price is next. He's gonna get off the next meeting, if you will. Darlene's probably gonna go. Everyone's gonna go, but. And I have to say that the episode itself was very beautifully shot. It had a very, like, a lot of people comparing it to Sopranos, this episode of Sopranos, where two of the characters were caught in the woods and stuff. Um, and having that kind of like same like at each other's kind of conversation. Um, I would say this for all the deaths that have happened on the show, Tyra Wellex just bleeding out is kind of a, a beautiful death, if you will. Everyone else has been getting headshots and gruesomeness, if you will. Um, being, I wonder if they're gonna show him like frozen in the woods, like shining style. You know, all frozen over and now Dom is going to have to figure out who killed the uh, CTO, the hero of uh, the 5-9 hack. Is this still F Society? Um, as far as Elliot goes, I think this might have transitioned into actually being better towards Darlene. I mean, he admitted to Tyrell that he's been shitty to his sister but he still cares about her and he wants her to get out alive if you will and hopefully that is the case he doesn't fall back to his bad habits <sighs> yeah so there's that um, I guess if you're into the multiverse thing maybe this will with the bright lights of the way Tyrell died and then fading out kind of to white this will um, reaffirm that if you're me on the fence, I'm like, eh, we'll see. Um, basically, I'm going to have to see White Rose, like a cackling villain, turning on the button and turning the machine on before before I believe in that, in that stuff. Completely, like 100%. So, that's this episode. I'm sorry it's a little late. Uh, I was having some audio and video issues. 
doing this on my phone. Um, so yeah, uh, <clears throat> my name is Arosha Shai. Um, this is Up Society RSC podcast. I'm closing this channel, logging off, and until next time, my friends.